Alright, this one's cool, you'll like this. Um, so a sequence is a set of numbers in uh, a particular order. So here we've got a sequence um, that, are, that are in order. The numbers are getting bigger. It goes from 3 to 5 to 7 to 9 to 11. And an arithmetic sequence is a sequence in which the difference between the terms is always the same. So for example, if I go from 3 to 5, that's a difference of 2. If I go from 5 to 7, that's a difference of 2, 7 to 9, 2, 9 to 11, take a wild guess, exactly, 2. So that's an arithmetic sequence. And this dot, dot, dot here says it just goes on forever. <coughs> so if I said, what is the third term of the sequence, you would say, you would kind of give me this blank look like, why are you asking me these, these easy questions? It's, it's 7. You know, it's first, second, third term, 7. But what if I said, what's the 5,000th term? Then you'd probably uh, give me a different look and say, I don't have time for this. I'm, I'm going to move on with my life. Because, why? Well, I mean, who wants to count? You know, we go from 11, you, you start filling these in, 13, 15. But you'd have to do that almost 5,000 times. I mean, nobody has time for that. So, what I want to show you how to do is actually to turn this guy into a function so then you could plug in the number 5000 and the function will spit out the 5000th term and it'll save you a ton of time and it'll make everyone happy so let me erase this stuff and then we'll get on that okay so basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna figure out uh, a pattern here and then we're gonna describe that pattern using the language of math so let's let's just figure out what we know here this is not rocket science um, and it's not magic. We just have to kind of write down some things that we know and then see if we can figure out the pattern. So, first of all, I just want to write, actually, let me rewrite what I had before that the difference between the terms is always 2. Okay, so we know that. We just, we just look at that and we, we can tell. Okay, so from 3 to 5 is 2, from 5 to 7 is 2. So let's write that down. Let's also write down the fact that we know that uh, this is the first term this is the second term, this is the third term, this is the fourth term, and this is the fifth term. So, let's let's just see, let's just make some observations here. So, we're we're starting with the number 3. Okay. If I want to get to the second term to 5, what do I do to that? Well, I would add 2. Okay. That was, that was pretty easy, right? Just add 2. Add this common difference that they have. Okay. But if I want to start from 3 and I want to get to the third term, what I would do is I would add 2 and then I would add 2 again. Right? In other words, I, could, I would just add be 3 plus this difference, let's, let's call this D, okay, real original, right, okay, what I could rewrite this as 3 plus 2 times D is equal to 7, okay, and I'm saying 2 times D because if 2 is D, I have to add it twice to get to 7. What about the fourth, so this is the third term. If I want to get to the fourth term, starting from the beginning, I would go three, and then how many jumps do I have to make? Uh, I have to make um, one, two, three. So I could write that either as three plus two plus two plus two is equal to nine. Or if I just want to make things simpler, which I usually do, three plus three times D, where D D represents this common difference. So I start with 3, then I add this D, this 2, 3 times, because I go, I do 3 jumps to get to 9. So the fourth term in the sequence is the first term plus 3 times the common difference. So actually, I could rewrite this whole pattern as something like this. 
All right. Actually, let me erase this stuff so there's so there's more room. Okay. So the fourth term in the sequence is the first term plus the common difference three times. So that's that's what I wrote out here. So um, I could I could generalize this, meaning I could describe the situation for, for any of these terms and just say um, the term that I'm looking at is equal to the first term plus um, the term number so like the fourth term with the term number would be four minus one uh, times the common difference okay and if I want to clean that up and put that into math what I would say is f of n and n is going to stand for the term number so n for 3 would be 1, n for 5 would be 2, n for 7 would be 3, n for 9 would be 4. So the term that I'm looking at, so f, so if I want to get the value of the term, then I would take the first term, and we just call that a of 1, that's supposed to be 1, let me back up, a 1. take the value of the first term and then you add the term number minus one number of times the common difference so let me just go through this for example for the for number nine the fourth term so if I want to find the value of the fourth term for this function I would do f of four is equal to the first term is three a a one is what we call that is three plus n minus one so four n is four we're looking at the fourth term n minus one which is three times the common difference which in this case is two so is that right so three plus four minus one is three three times two so three times two is six plus 3 is equal to 9. So that works. And this function will work for any term in the sequence, in this sequence. And you can actually, you can substitute in any, the values for any arithmetic sequence. So here you put the term that you start with. Here is the num number of the term you're looking at. And here is the common difference. So if I wanted to find the 5,000th term, I would just do f, f of 5,000 is equal to uh, the first term plus the term number 5,000 minus 1 times the common difference of 2. Sorry, it's going off the screen there. So I would do uh, 4,999 times 2 plus 3, and that would be the value of the 5,000th term, much quicker than adding it all up by hand. Oh, by the way, I forgot to introduce uh, Math Ceratops' new friend, Mario B. Yeah, he's kind of a kind of a mathematical chef, if you will.